Hi. Hello everyone, this is Aegon of Astora, and welcome back to my blind playthrough of Elden Ring. This is episode number 41 being recorded on Saturday the 15th of April, 2023. I hope you're all having a fantastic day whenever it is you find yourself watching this. So, it is the ungodly hour of 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> As usual, I got up several hours early in an attempt to do some recording. Excuse me. And uh, I was going to say as usual, but I guess for I don't have notes necessarily for every episode, but I do have notes for this one. And so the first note I have here relates to where we are, but I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but I guess really only one note for this episode. The rest is just sort of the order in which uh, I think we should be doing things in this episode. Um, so my one note relates to Sage Gowry and something that he said, I think it would have been in episode 39, one of the last few episodes anyways, because it's all sort of a blur at this point, because it's, it's been a long week. And uh, yeah, thankfully, I'm very grateful to have had, well, had time. I made time to record several episodes this past week. So um, in one of those episodes, we were speaking with Sage Gowry, and uh, he mentioned that, uh, and this is somewhat a direct quote, I probably should have written it down verbatim, but essentially what Sage Gowry says is, like her mother, Millicent has potential to be a great warrior, um, and so, like her mother, so that led me to wonder, okay, so is Millicent... Millennia's daughter. And so... I don't, I'm too tired to know what the technical term is uh, at the moment. I'm not fully awake yet. Uh, I imagine... The term I'm looking for is dangling modifier, where... Or at least... <laughs> it would have been clearer if this was two sentences. But essentially, it was one long sentence where he says, Like her mother... Millicent has the potential to be a great warrior, comma, but, um, uh, and then what, what did he go on to say? But, um, she only has one arm and again, this is not a direct quote, but she only has one arm and she is, but very young. So <laughs> do either or both of those statements apply to both Millicent and her mother? Is he saying that he knew, you know, insofar as her mother is millennia, is he saying that he knew millennia when she was young and that she also only had one arm? Um, And yeah, unless I'm inclined to believe that millennia herself didn't have one arm insofar as Millicent's mother is millennia. Um, and that that is only meant to apply to the the whole great poten the potential to be a great warrior thing. Because, yeah, unless in this world, Lamarckism, is it Lamarckism? The whole idea that you can inherit a trait that is acquired over a lifetime. So, um, was it Jean, pa Jean Baptiste Lamarck, I think, who was, you know, proposed an alternative understanding of... Um, evolution that yeah anyways um that's pretty much all i have so in other words is millicent millennia's daughter second item on our list is the converted 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 fringe tower because oh did i go to the wrong place <laughs> no because of course we came here in a much earlier episode and did not find our way inside. And the only reason I remember this is the fact that uh, this weekend, which is to say, yeah, uh, it, either today or tomorrow, the episode comes out in which we first found this place. Um, which is to say, the episode is being released on YouTube. And so, yeah, I 
I was like, oh, I don't think we ever came back there. And indeed, it doesn't look like we did. So the developer message here is may erudition light the way. And I think we first came across this place an episode or two. Try gesturing. Oh, oh. Oh, we learned this, I think. Who did we learn this from? Was this from Selen? No, we just got rid of our wave. Probably should not have done that. Oh, crud. It's this one. Don't want to get rid of the fusion dance. We'll get rid of the curtsy. How about that? Oh, the gesture. <laughs> Okay, shout out to this message, um, because <laughs> what I was thinking, because it was the same episode in which, or not the same episode, it was not long after, oh, <laughs> again, think outlandish theories about how to progress certain quest lines. Um, just now I had the thought, ooh, what if uh, this robe gave Jar Baron, whatever her name is, the impression that we have slick, slidey hands because it's a ruler's robe. <laughs> ah, what I was thinking, erudition light the way. Oh, what if we put on the juvenile scholar set? Because, you know, we came across this an episode or two after finding the juvenile scholar set. So in my mind, that was a great idea. Uh, but obviously there's a much more straightforward explanation, which is, yeah, erudition. Duh. <laughs> okay. Am I supposed to do it in front of the door or something? Or am I just supposed to wait? Oh, <laughs> just um, hmm. Let's try it in front of the door. So we need to have the headpiece on, okay. Do we have the headpiece? You have a headpiece, doesn't matter which one. Let's try the double one. Okay, yeah. Again, the, you know, even if I had realized the headpiece thing, there's no guarantee that, no guarantee, I, I almost certainly would not. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I almost certainly would not. <laughs> I'll show you if my, my mouth is just sort of, it's, it's kept shut by the helmet. I can't really say speaking, you know. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Oh, man. There are too many options. All right. Yeah, I... I on the one hand, you know, even if I had noticed the erudition thing, that's one thing. There's no way I would have known to put on the helmet. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not that creative or um, not that good at Souls games, I guess.
for a second. I was like, oh, is this an NPC? We're just going to get to have a nice chat. That ghost scared me. Okay. Yeah, the... <laughs> Those heads. They're, they're so... All over. Like, they're everywhere. Um... And maybe, again, just because I'm over-leveled, but they seem to be... They seem to be just, yeah, not very good at what they do if what they do is attack people. <laughs> okay. So my thought process, I have not explained in coming here, is once again, everything I'm trying to get to this landmass over here. So I'm hoping there's a sending gate up here. And that it's not. Please, please, please tell me. It is not just a stinking memory stone. Because we have enough memory stones at this point. We don't need any more. Oh, gosh. Darn it. Please. Okay. Cannon of Haima. And Gavel of Haima. Okay, that's more interesting than Ascending Stone, at least. Or Ascending Stone. <laughs> Memory Stone, sorry, it's too early. One of the Glintstone Sorceries of the Academy of Rai Lucaria. Lobs an explosive magic projectile that flies in an arc. Charging enhances potency. Drawn from the Conspectus of Haima, the Adjudicator of the Academy, this sorcery employs might as a means to quell conflict. Creates a magical great hammer and slams it down. Allows one follow-up attack. Drawn from the scholarly conspectus of Haima, the adjudicator of the academy, this sorcery employs might as well as means. A means, pardon me. This sorcery employs might as a means to quell conflict. It also looks like it's a gavel. So you know the adjudicator's, I guess, kind of like a judge. So that makes sense. Okay, the mystery of the Lyurnia Lake landmass continues. Gosh darn it. <laughs> because, yeah. Where is it? One. No idea. No earthy idea. Although, again, we do have to go to, what is it called, Noxtella. So maybe we get there from Noxtella. Who knows? But before we go to Noxtella, let us do a little NPC roundup. So as usual, I'm going to cut from here to whatever the next new thing <laughs> to the next point in time at which I come across something new. Uh, when interacting with the various NPCs I'm going to check in with uh, as a way of sort of, yeah, saving time in the edit and, you know, saving me the trouble of making conversation while walking around and nothing is happening. So I'll see you at the next point at which something happens. Be not alarmed, nor afeared. I would but... Okay, I thought maybe we could speak with the mini Ronnie if we sat at the side of the race next to her mom, but unfortunately not. And also, Renala herself has no new dialogue at all, so. Okay, well, <laughs> as it turns out, there is not a lot going on with the NPCs. You know, I do seem to recall that we missed something. There's a ladder over here, I believe. I was going from NPC to NPC and uh, then I saw on the right, there's the monitor right in front of me, of course, and then 
right underneath that I have a phone that is hooked up to the camera where Aurelia of Astora is sleeping. And I can see now that she's stirring. So I might have to <laughs> pick up this recording session later. So if you see an awkward edit, that's probably why. So at minimum, we missed an item here. Oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, there's the pumpkin-headed one. I meant to look this up. Is that supposed to be, like, the queen ant or something? Ouch. Correct. <laughs> yeah, um, I seem to recall that there was a fork in the road, and uh, I think I think in that sim that situation I was likewise um, keeping my eye on a stirring Aurelia of Astora, and therefore did not was not able to. Complete. Oh. Okay, that's not frightening at all. One of these friends who was summoning. <laughs> Again, obviously, I rewatch uh, old episodes of this series before they're released, you know, just to make sure that it's not terrible and I don't see anything particularly egregious in them. Uh, you know, I don't know what I would do if I did come across such things, but that is what I do. Um, hmm. Oh, I see where we are. Okay, interesting. But, gosh darn it. We can't call Torrent. Don't tell me you can actually... Gosh darn it. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to be able to jump up there. Um, but yeah, in, in any case, uh, I was re-watching the... I believe the first episode in which we finally, after many episodes of avoiding it, went to the Weeping Peninsula. And those friends who just anchored their hammer weapons in the ground and buffed them with gravity. <laughs> and we came across them and they were so excited to, to summon that one guy, the Onyx Lord friend. And uh, I obliterated him in like three hits and they're like, oh no. <laughs> I can't believe we spent all that time trying to summon him. And then he just gets obliterated like that. What is this over-leveling you speak of? Surely that must not be permitted, especially for a YouTube playthrough. What are these voices I do, honestly? So more of those swords women. When we read about here I, actually i think that this was a night maiden on the stairs there twin crowns 
worn by the night beings of the Eternal City, indicates the highest clerical rank and hides the eyes with silk. Long ago, the Nox invoked the ire of the Greater Will and were banished deep underground. Now they live under a false night sky in eternal anticipation of their liege, of the coming age of the stars, and their lord of night. So the Swordstresses are the is the one that's riding on the ant over there, one of the Swordstresses. So did they invoke the ire of the greater will invoke evoke evoke i think is it gosh darn it they invoked but doesn't to invoke something like <laughs> gosh darn it okay where's my phone it's time for fun with definitions. Invoke as a verb means to cite or appeal to as an authority for an action or in support of an argument. To call on a deity or spirit in prayer as a witness or for inspiration. To summon a spirit by charms or incantations. And to give rise to evoke, so... Okay, so I guess both are correct because invoke can also mean evoke. But yeah, I think the more sort of straightforward way of putting that would be that they evoked the ire of the greater will. And so what I was wondering, in other words, is whether... Whether they evoked the ire of the greater will by themselves or whether they sort of teamed up with Ronnie the witch and that it was by virtue of their um by virtue of their conspiring uh, of the fact that they have pardon me by virtue of having conspired with Ronnie the witch that they evoked the ire of the greater will or were they both sort of, you know, uh, messing with or, cons again, conspiring to overthrow the greater will at different points in time with different people for different reasons? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, Ghost Club Fort, level 7. Oh, yeah, a rally of a story it looks like is awake. I believe my wife is trying to put her back to sleep. I still not come up with like a an analogous pseudonym for my wife. At one point I was gonna suggest Henri of Astora, but there already is an Henri of Astora, so that wouldn't really work. Drawstring holy grease. Oh, oh. It's a new weapon well, not really a new weapon. We saw one like that in Dark Souls 3. Oh, although, actually, never mind. The one in Dark Souls 3 does not extend like that. Too early. Oh, it's a jumping attack. Oh, gosh darn it. Blood curling scream that. Yeah, so we might as well explore all of these regions in the water. Before we proceed up those stairs and into the city proper. Silver to your husk. Oh. Gosh darn it. Keep trying to call Torrent. Alright. It is a couple hours later. <laughs> a relay of Astora is down for her first nap of the day, which is tends to be Oh, snail friends over here. It's, tends to be her longest nap. 
Celestial do. These are not crystal snails like the others. Gosh darn it. And I decided that I would try something that I've been meaning to try for a while now, which is, you know, I would have mentioned, I don't know, 10, 15 episodes ago. Uh, I can't remember if we've already gone all the way around here. We might have. We did indeed. Um, 10 or 15 episodes, episodes ago, I mentioned that I was recording in... 1600 <clears throat> excuse me 1600 by 900 resolution which yeah not a full 1080p but that was up from earlier in the playthrough wow there are a lot of mimic tears there and they're crackling with electricity for some reason so that can't be good for us um interesting this like i'm not even sure how to describe this they look what are they called It's not quite like cotton. Might be thinking of a completely different thing, but are, are those pussy willows? Is that what they're called? Obviously not, uh, not an expert in botany or anything like that, but um, still no item. So I assume that means there's no item up here. But yeah, so I am recording in full resolution, 1920 by 1080. Did you just fall from the sky? What the heck? Oh, you guys are on the walls here. I'm trying to climb up to the the city, friends? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> ah, dead end. And so I'm just sort of monitoring the CPU usage on my right here. Um, oh, getting lots of ratings on our messages, which is quite nice. And, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, because obviously I would like for the quality to be as high as it possibly can get. And so they explode after you take them out. So that's what the crackling electricity is. And, yeah, so, I, you know, I figured I've been wanting to try this for a while. Which is to say recording a full resolution. And it's kind of awkward because, of course, I didn't start the episode in full resolution. But uh, as I was starting this new recording session, I figured, okay, might as well just give it a shot and see what happens. And I'm just... So I've only skipped two frames as a result of encoding lag, although, gosh darn it, my... It's the, the problem with recording in full resolution. I don't know if... I have the ability to do it. Oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, the CPU settings. Yeah, I'm dropping frames now. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to go put it back down to 1600 by 900. Oh, yeah, dropping lots of frames now. Sorry, everyone. One second. Okay, we are back down to our original resolution. So, yeah, my apologies. I thought... I thought the settings I came up with would be able to handle this, but apparently it doesn't look that way. Gosh. I've been trying to avoid fighting the snails, but they're not making it easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, cause as soon as I start dropping frames, that's when, that's where I draw the line. Okay, this is the entrance, sorry. Still regaining my bearings. It is funny, looking back at those old recording sessions from earlier in the playthrough when I was like, yeah, you know, I have a three hour window today to record. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, the question was whether I could record multiple episodes in one day and not like... You know, how many recording sessions can I get over the course of a week? But yeah, such is... Such are the sacrifices you make as a parent, I suppose. Which 
is totally fine. It's just funny, the contrast. Whoa. Oh, you got a nice little shield there, friend. I actually have one of those shields, I think. Uh-oh. You all make a good team, it looks like. Oh, can they hurt each other? Oh, they can. Very nice. Well, sorry, friends. <laughs> Golden Rune level 10. Ghost Clover at level 8. Ouch. Nice little spear throw you got there. Sorry for the dead angle, friend. So yeah, I'm very intrigued about this area. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I think I was just... Oh, gosh darn it. Friend. <laughs> I was just talking about... Um, yeah, the differences in uh, pre-Parenthood YouTube stuff and post-Parenthood YouTube stuff, which is to say... Oh yeah, I remember where I was going, which was to point out that... Yeah, at one point in time when I was a graduate student living by myself, um, I could just sort of record for however long I wanted, and it didn't really matter. Um, but then, of course, <laughs> at the same time, I, yeah, <laughs> while I was a graduate student living by myself, I struggled enormously with depression and, and anxiety in a way that I don't now. Like, those are still things that I struggle with. Mental health is, uh, you know, it's not really, best way I can put it is, at least for me, it's not really a state as much as it is a process and uh, maybe a continuum is another way of putting it. In that, oh, oh did you fall down, friend? Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, in that, yeah, you, you're never... Oh, yeah, I'm just not depressed, period. Or not depressed anymore. Like, for me, anyway, it's... it's I feel anxious about particular things and you have an anxiety in relation to particular situations or you know you're just unable to shut your mind off to negative possibilities in particular contexts and so all those things sort of weigh on you after a time uh, or just in general I should say and so you know those things continue to be challenges for me however you know I'm infinitely happier now and more fulfilled in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, so there's another giant friend here. It's the first time we've been able to sort of see one of them from this particular angle. Got some nice, some nice bling there. Oh gosh, it wasn't in the comments. Oh, my apologies, I've forgotten your name. I uh, made a mental note to remember who it was. Did I write it down here? No, I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, someone pointed out, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not Fashion Souls, or, you know, I prefer to, to speak not of Fashion Souls, but Elden Bling, and I was like, well, okay, that's brilliant, and, uh, yeah, this giant friend here definitely has the Elden Bling going, <laughs> um, yeah, so I like that, and yeah, so, in other words, you know, obviously, Bug House. So in other words, it's just for this golden centipede to hint that uh, unless you're supposed to be an NPC in here or something, we've just not progressed that quest line to that point. Sorry, just taking a drink of my coffee. Um, but yeah, I'm obviously infinitely more fulfilled now in my life than I was while living alone as a graduate student. But of course, then that comes with its own challenges. And, you know, I think... To some degree, the, the grass always looks greener, so to speak, in that, you know, you might long for the days when you had more free time or 
you, you were able to sort of just record all night if you wanted to. Um, and of course, there were consequences to some of the things I did in grad school, like it took me a lot longer to finish my degree than it probably ought to have. Oh, this is the... F okay, never mind. This is... We have seen this friend already. This is obviously a new angle because when we were down there, we were wondering, how the heck do you get up there? And now we have our answer. So, um... I feel like I'm a bit turned around here, but... You're a scarab. And yeah, so in other words, you take the the good with the bad in the sense that and bad is just, yeah, I don't think it's bad. It's just, you know, a different phase in my life. That's all. So if I want to play Elden Ring, at least for now, because of the particular sort of, uh, phase in a relay of a source life that we're currently in and you know the things that she's currently struggling with just you know most notably just sleep and sleeping well and through the night and without the active intervention of my wife um then if i want to play the game then the one time i really have to do that is by waking up early, like I suppose I could also stay up late, but then, you know, I, I wouldn't really know where to draw the line. So at least if I force myself to wake up early, then really it's up to me as to, okay, what time am I going to get up? And then I have to actually get up and, you know, eat breakfast and have a shower and do all these things before I can play. And then, you know, I come in here and I play until it's time to stone sort of keep very nice until it's time to go and help with Aurelia of Astora. And obviously during the week, because my wife is on maternity leave, during the week she's the one who's, um, well, I guess she's doing most of the stuff most of the time, but during the week, especially when I'm working, um, thankfully I'm working from home, so I can and do often sort of take breaks to just go and check on them, see what's going on, and help with things if uh, they need it. But, uh, yeah, during the weekends especially, I try to spell my wife as much as possible so that she has some time off. But, yeah, certain things that maybe just won't let me do insists on my wife to be the one who does certain things so you know it is what it is but you know i think she'll get to a certain age where the challenges will change and you know she'll be more obviously accepting of help from her father well yeah lots of uh i was expecting that this sort of lower area under the city proper wouldn't be quite, I don't know why I'm picking all this stuff up. <laughs> I was expecting it wouldn't be so extensive, but yeah, rather extensive. It's rather fortunate that these friends can hurt each other our lives a lot easier. Oh. Oh no. Uh oh. No, we didn't get that item, did we? Or was it even an item? Whoops. I'm just gonna take a drink of coffee here. I love that when they're punched up, you just need to take out one of them and then they all just sort of slowly murder one another. Celestial 2. So, all this Celestial do here, is it meant to like... Uh, point to the fact that... Because the whole thing with Celestial do is forgiveness of sin, essentially. I think. Where do we have Celestial do? Uh, 
reversing all antagonizations. Oh, well, I guess it's found in the Eternal City, so no wonder we're finding it here in, uh, at a greater rate than elsewhere. Once upon a time, the stars of the night sky guided fate, and this is a recollection of those times. So, something I did during the NPC roundup was I went to a bunch of different sites of grace. I went even, for, for, eh, for example, to Church of Ella, where we first encountered Ronnie. I might as well take him out anyway. Went to the Church of Ella. No, oh, I may have just made a huge mistake. the Church of Ella and sat at the Site of Grace there and no such luck as far as being able to talk to Ronnie, Tiny Ronnie, whatever her name is, Mini Ronnie. <laughs> um, and so in other words, so it, it's literally just a dead end. Well, I should have just left those ant friends alone. <laughs> I guess I've not learned any lessons from when I was a... <laughs> Two or three years old, however old I was, and I used to like to squish ants. Um, but yeah, uh, in other words, the only place we've been able, we've had that option at a site of grace to speak with the mini Ronnie, or the Ronnie doll, whatever they were called, was the only place we had that option was the site of grace for this place. So, Noxtella Eternal City, site of grace. Where is this going? Up? No, down. Normally I rest at this point, but Noxtella Waterfall Basin. Oh, right, we saw it from up there. Okay, before we return here, I think we need to make sure we're not missing anything up here, because we may have missed one or two things. So yeah, that's that place where we were all the way up top. I just didn't want everything to respawn. Uh, we were all the way up top and then yeah, I tried to jump down the waterfall essentially and ended up dying, so... We need to figure out how to get up there. I imagine that we'll have to go to the city proper. And then descend from there. Because, yeah, it looks like it's connected to that bridge there. So I don't think we can access that from down here. Got quite a few runes from just clearing out this area. Oh. <laughs> Miss one item at least. Smithing stone level six. I think we need two more. Either two more or that one is the one we were waiting for. It was either four or six, I don't remember, but but yeah, so we could go up or we could go down. Uh, <laughs> my exploration heuristic would suggest that up is the way to go. However, I am tempted to go down because that's where we started going. Well, we might as well check this out. Because it appears to be a separate path from the up the stairs path.
Oh, chest. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me open it. Ooh, Ghost Glove Horde level 9. I meant to check the... Item descriptions. It looks like they are still basically the same. Okay then. Shall we head? Let's head to the waterfall basin. So let's sit at the side of Grace, see if we can speak with Mini Ronnie. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> A ducky fellow, aren't we? Or is it merely thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. Fine. I hadn't expected any soul to recognize me in this guise. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. Perform for me a service as recompense. Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. The name of Rani the Witch is already sullied by thee. I will not brook disobedience in this matter. Okay. Let us speak of the past a while. I was once an Empyrean. Of the demigods. Only I, Mikola, and Melania could claim that title. Each of us was chosen by our own two fingers. Hold on, friend, I need to get my notepad. To succeed Queen Marika. To become the new god of the coming age. Which is when I received Blythe. In the form of a vassal tailored for an Empyrean. But I would not acquiesce to the two fingers. I stole the rune of death. Slew mine own Empyrean flesh, casting it away. I would not be controlled by that thing. The two fingers and I have been cursing each other ever since, and the baleful shadows are their assassins. Oh my goodness, okay, wow. Um, it's a good thing I'm recording this. <laughs> as soon as she mentioned the thing about her, Michaela, and oh gosh darn it, who was it? Ronnie, I'm, I'm furiously scribbling things on my notepad here. I suppose they could just do this during editing, but uh, it was Ronnie McKella. Oh man, who else was it? <sighs> yeah, okay. I'll have to return to that, but um, Empyreans, okay. And then she was sent blithe as a vassal. So as someone loyal to her. Even when I turned my back upon the two fingers, Blythe remained my loyal ally. <laughs> Though he was created a vassal for an Empyrean, he was a colossal failure on the part of the two fingers, Blythe and E.G. both. Art willing to give too much to me, yet they both understand what lieth beyond the dark path. That I must betray everything and rid the world of what came before. Ah. Should I add thee to the list? <laughs> Another one. Kind of heart. As kind of heart as they. Ah. This form hath loosened my tongue. I've let slip too much. Forget what thou's heard. Forget. I've let forget. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to do a ghost voice for her. <laughs> Ooh, I'm Ronnie the Witch. <laughs> okay, um, the amount to unpack there is, yeah, enormous. Um, the the amount of stuff to unpack, I should say. So, wow. She. 
you know, in a way, it was almost like an exposition dump. Ghost Glove or level 9, by the way, which I think that's the highest we've got. I don't know, we've already had level 9 stuff. So, wow, yeah. Uh, but it's funny, she... Is all, she almost, like, denigrates Lithe and E.G. for continuing to serve her despite the fact that she turned her back on the two fingers. She stole the Rune of Death, created the Forge of the Black Blade, and then um, used it to betray the two fingers, and she wouldn't see visions of chaos. She couldn't or wouldn't Was it she said acquiesce to the two fingers or to that thing as she put it? Yeah, fascinating stuff. Oh gosh, darn it. I still cannot believe that these friends are in this game. <laughs> like, shamelessly lifted. from Dark Souls. Oh, we're gonna get cursed. Oh my goodness. There are massive eyes as well. Gosh darn it. Not a fan of these friends. Uh. And I love that, you know, oh yeah, she's in <laughs> miniature doll form. And therefore, oh, my, my tongue is loosened to what the... Okay, so this is one of the baleful shadows she was speaking of. All right, friend, well, you mess with the wrong miniature doll. Do you like how she shaded us, Ronnie, for... Is it normal for you to speak to dolls? I'm like, well, yeah, I play Bloodborne. Ooh. Thou art the last. Tell the two fingers that Ronnie the Witch cometh. Drend thy flesh with a fateful wound, ne'er to heal. This friend's got some decent poise. Oh, oh that's two hands... Gosh darn it. So this looks like another wolf friend? She mentioned that Blythe was created. Gosh darn it. Okay, I'm not going to try and parry this friend. She mentioned that Blythe was created to be an Empyrean or something. Gosh, yeah. I probably should have waited to start taking notes because... Oh, gosh darn it. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> um, because, yeah, then it made it more difficult for me to sort of continue following what was happening. Wow, this person is obliterating me. So, Baleful Shadow. Eh, it looks like they're also using Blythe's weapon as well. of HP. Gosh darn it. Beautifully formed. My thanks. It was more of a challenge than I envisioned. Now I can finally stand before them. This is farewell, my dear. No! And E.G. I love them. Oh. No, I liked, I liked having Ronnie along. Oh, gosh darn it. I liked having Ronnie along for the ride. Now I'm wondering, did I make a mistake by coming down here instead of going to the city proper? 
Like, would she have had more to say at the city? Oh, that sucks. Okay, a doll resembling Ronnie the Witch. From head to toe, every detail is perfect. The chilliness is gone, feeling now like an empty husk. There is no response. So she just jumps from body to body. Like, that's incredible. She's such an interesting character. A key discarded by Lunar Princess Ronnie alongside her very flesh. Opens a treasure chest passed down to Ukarian princesses. We finally... Uh, have access to that treasure chest. It is said to be found in the Grand Library of Raya Lucaria with her mother, Renala. Okie dokie. Well, you know, somewhat fittingly, we started this episode by going to see Renala. And I was disappointed that uh, nothing came of that, but little did I know, I just needed to wait a little bit. Everyone says, I did it, but ah, friend. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Plump sword, old plump sword, you don't have the right. And the pointing right at you too, that's... Yeah, not nice. But also funny. You can never resist the butterflies. What is this? Elevator. Darn it. I'm still holding out hope that we'll one day, one day, we'll find our way to the top of that landmass. Unless that chest, I keep, I keep like inventing new possibilities for how we'll get there. Unless that chest is a sending trap, sending gate trap in uh, the Academy of Raya the Carl. Oh, gosh darn it, Lake of Rot. I don't like the sounds of that at all. How is there a lake under another lake? That doesn't make any sense. Lake of Rot, shore side. Ugh. We cannot call Torrent here. Ugh. That looks like a dam. Please tell me this is not... Map, Lake of Rot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, of course there's... Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Darn it. <laughs> okay, so... <gasps> there is hope yet! There is hope yet. There's some thing here. Presumably that's an elevator shaft. Oh, that's an elevator. It's an elevator shaft. <laughs> I cannot wait. Um, except that I can, because that requires us to cross... Uh, okay, let's go to the Academy of Raya Lucaria first. They're the Grand Library, I should say. Yeah, I don't think she has, you know, again, I think she's sort of an AI chatbot slash vegetable at this point, but... Ah, thou. Is it thy wish to yet... Yeah, no new dialogue. Be not I so there is something about about the cycle of rebirth in an older episode that I likened gosh darn I just don't remember what the item description was. I likened it to Flash clones in the Halo series, but the more obvious sort of implication of it. Was it the eggs? What the heck was it? I don't remember. Something about the cycle of rebirth. And I said, oh yeah, it sounds like 
they I don't remember, but I remember when I was watching it just going, oh, that's kind of a, I missed the most obvious sort of explanation for what the item description was talking back, uh, talking back, talking about, but now I can't remember what it was, which item it was. Anyways, map of Lake of Rot and Environs, a great lake of standing water downstream of the Ainsel River. It is said that the divine essence of an outer god is sealed away in this land divine essence of an outer god so a god who is not sort of part of the established deific power structure or something yeah i'm not sure anyway so the whole thing about rebirth the i think the most obvious explanation was the one i skipped which is that they were perpetually doing rebirth because every time they rebirthed one of these school children they had defects um, and so they, they kept doing rebirth, trying to, you know, get one without defects, but they all had defects. And that's sort of the gist of it from what I recall. Legendary item, dark moon ring. Ring depicting a leaden full moon, symbolic of a cold oath. The ring is supposed to be given by lunar princess Ronnie to her consort. Rani is an Empyrean, meaning her consort would by rights earn the title of Lord. A warning is engraved within. Whoever thou mayest be, take not, this, take not the ring from this place. The solitude beyond the night is better mine alone. Okay. <laughs> Symbolic of a cold oath. So... Have we just become Ronnie's consort? But like the ring itself, there's a warning on the ring <laughs> engraved within it. Don't do this. It says it's supposed to be given by her to her consort. So in other words, suggesting that that's not sort of what, or, you know, supposed to because she locked it away and she didn't give it to anyone. But technically she just gave it to us by giving us the key. I don't know. Unless that is, I, I guess the simplest explanation is that we just unlocked one of the endings of the game where we could become an Empyrean Lord by becoming Ronnie's consort. So I guess that makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, that's one mystery solved. And now we can finally unstar that Sight of Grace. So that's, yeah, I'm very happy with that. So we might as well continue along. Or do we want to go back to Noxtella? Mm, yeah, let's go back to Noxtella and then we'll go to the Lake of Rot shore site afterwards. So we've done that. So let's go to the actual city proper. We're only 9,000 runes away from being able to level up. So might as well do that. Two more levels until we reach level 50 in Vigor, and then I think the next thing... Hmm, I guess we should maybe just aim for 50 Vigor, 50 Endurance, because like the, the game's just going to keep throwing runes at us. And, you know, my suspicion is that the enemies are only going to get more damage spongy from here on out, so might as well just continue leveling up with the runes that the game gives us. Obviously, I'm not farming anymore, because don't really need to. Um, not because, you know, I'm taking to heart the criticism that I've received for farming. Although I have considered it, but yeah, that's not why I'm not farming. That's not why I've chosen to stop farming. I've chosen to stop farming because <laughs> these friends are just <laughs> crackling with excitement. Oh, we got a visitor. Everyone, let's go. <laughs> So I'll walk down the stairs in unison. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, no, maybe we should have spread out. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Sorry, friends. 
so yeah, uh, you know, I've stopped farming, as I mentioned, just because our build has everything it needs at this point. So really no need to farm. Can I parry this or is it like a whip? Can't, yeah, it qualifies as a whip probably and therefore cannot be parried. Oh, gosh darn it. Well played, friend. I, I did not deserve to have bested you there. So were they just venerating that? Oh. <laughs> Rare item. Ant's skull plate. Ant's skull plate. Huge head of one of the giant ants who, which inhabit the two underground rivers. Used without modification as a shield. Excels at repelling enemy attacks. Giant ants are venomous creatures granting a boost to, to immunity when wielding this shield. There goes Ronnie. <laughs> okay. Um, at some point we should go speak with EG as well, I think. And yeah, we still have no idea where Blythe is. Oh, speaking of which. Something else that occurred to me. We heard about... Or we heard about... We fought that person who was wearing a wolf mask and was an assassin. Mask fashioned after the head of a black wolf. Relic of an assassin who assumed the guise of Ronnie the Witch's loyal shadow. The likeness is striking, so... Yeah, I'm a bit confused about that part. Because... Obviously, <laughs> we've already found the armor. Su suggests that this person has been defeated, but we obviously had not. We had yet to defeat them up to that, to that point. But of course, you know, we've seen on many occasions that people can be in multiple locations and archer ashes. People can exist in multiple states at one time, so I guess it's not completely out of the realm of reasonableness. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell, used to summon three archer spirits. Spirits of archers who belonged to the Fallen Hawks, a band of soldiers that once explored the Eternal City. Their arrows are imbued with cold ghost flame. Though their methods are somewhat crude, they work well as a squadron, firing a hail of arrows in unison at the sound of war cry. That's pretty cool. So at some point, we might need to equip a war cry to make use of some of these ashes, because I think there have been several, several ashes at this point that have implicated the use of a war cry. Sorry, I don't know why my voice is cracking. It's now Sunday, April the 16th, and I hope you're all still having a fantastic day. It's, uh, once again, the ungodly hour of 6.30 in the morning. I have a phalanx situation here. one is like <laughs> unresponsive for some reason ghost glove ward pickers bell bearing level two those don't typically have item descriptions associated with them or at least not unique item description so we can use that to get Ghost Glove Wart level 4 to 6. Which is very nice. Because that means, yeah, in essence, we can upgrade any of the Glove Wart we have all the way up to whatever the level 6 Glove Wart is. So the only limitation at that point are our runes, and we have plenty of runes, so... Not really much of a limitation at all. Is 
So we can hop in the window there. Afraid of things dropping from the ceiling now. This is just a, <laughs> the loot city, isn't it? Somber smithing stone level seven. Not that I mind. I don't mind a city dedicated to giving you some nice loot. Stalactites. In the previous. The last time I referenced them, I called them stalactites. They're not stalactites, they're stalactites. So we've obviously already dealt with all those friends down there. So I assume it's the same civilization that's responsible for both cities. Like it has to be because the, oh, there's a giant boulder, of course, because why wouldn't there be? Am I making a mistake by just watching it? Yeah, it appears that way. Uh oh, I wanted a coffee though, or a coffee, a drink of my coffee. Uh oh. Oh yeah, I forgot these probably can't be parried. They are pretty cool though, they got some fancy moves, so I'll give them that. Night Maidens and Swordstress Puppets. An old puppet crafted in the Eternal City, used to summon the spirits of a Night Maiden and Swordstress. Three these sisters, members of a cold-blooded race who wield flowing weapons, became puppets of their own volition. That's a weird idea. But they would become puppets of their own volition. You can hear that boulder just... Oh. What the... Is it just coming after us? the heck <laughs> okay that's very strange I love the idea of a massive boulder with an HP bar although that's the case until it murders me I suppose Whoops. Oh no. Okay, come on, come on, come on. You can never resist the golden runes. Oh. I didn't even get to read that message. Ooh. Oh no, are you stuck? That's too bad. <sighs> oh gosh darn, this is going to take a while. Okay, <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> Get wrecked, boulder. Larval tear. So, in other words, it was a larval tear taking the shape of a boulder, so, yeah more or less in line with oh my are you <laughs> are you joking
I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's a, <laughs> a new standard in trap setting. My goodness. FromSoft ought to be proud of that. We have a legendary item here. Great Ghost Glove Ward. So is that like a, I think I've questioned this before. I assume that's like a Titanite Slab. Yeah, strengthens Renowned Ashes to plus 10. Wow, that uh, trap really has shaken my trust. Guess nowhere to go but onward and upward. That's what I'm doing, seeking an item. So again, more evidence of the Golden Order's presence here. Smithing stone level six. Yeah, I think we only needed four for the next level on our weapon, but that means we only need one more. Although, no, actually, because then we need an additional four at that point. So, yeah, we're getting close to potentially being able to max out our item, I think. Which is obviously very exciting news. All these chairs in here and runes everywhere all oh. and of course there's a massive boulder up there too oh i was hoping that would happen <laughs> behold benediction or not benediction Erudition. Now that I understand it, I do find the uh, system of item rarity to be quite helpful. Giving you an immediate sort of visual indication of what type of item you're about to pick up. This one is just a common item. Somber Smithing Stone level 7. Maybe common item isn't the right term, but just a, a non-rare item. Okay, so that's got to be where the boss is, seemingly. You're a scarab somewhere. Smithing's on level six, so that was a crystal, crystal lizard scarab. Okay. That is a a creepy sight. File this one under potential <laughs> potential thumbnail images. 
All right. Um, it seems as though we can summon. Uh oh. The jig may be up. Ooh. So, what was his friend called? A night maiden? Yeah, night maiden. What are they turning into? Oh no, that's bad. They are quite formidable, these friends. I was going for the guard break there, but I suppose that works too. Wow. Okay. Another legendary item. Moon of Noxtella. This legendary talisman is a treasure of Noxtella, the Eternal City. Increases memory slots. <laughs> That's just what it, we needed. This talisman represents the lost black moon. The moon of Noxtella was the guide of countless stars. Okay, so I suppose that's it. I should have made note on my notepad here where we were in terms of the length of the episode. Because I'm not actually sure. So maybe we should go back to the round table hold. See if we can upgrade our weapon. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything, although... Gosh, I don't remember if we accessed that tree. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I almost completely missed this. So this will probably take us to an elevator, which will bring us down to where that tree is. Can you imagine if we just warped away? That would have been dreadful. Indeed. Regret is covered in larval tear blood. <laughs> have we already dealt with that? I believe we have.
beautiful. Absolutely tremendous stuff. <laughs> it I think that leads to the underground lake or did it But yeah, let's head back to the site of grace, or sorry, the uh, table of lost grace. Gosh, still occasionally go in the completely wrong direction here. Well, where have you been hiding? I took you for dead. No matter, it's all the same. Lay out your arms, then. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Do some spirit tuning as well. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? I am. Alright, well... Okay, we just need to pop some runes. It's fifteen thousand. Beautiful. Greetings. Are you here? I am here for spirit tuning. Thank you. Okay. Gosh darn it. We need some more runes. <laughs> Let's use four of them. Let's say five. Just swimming in runes at this point. I'm putting a lot of faith in whoever that person was who said that uh, that uh, Latena has the highest DPS. Yeah, because she is now fully upgraded. So that'll be very interesting to see, I think. Okay, so the next thing then is, uh, I guess, the... Lake of Rod Shoreside. Oh gosh, looking forward to this. We, do we even, can we even craft the boluses for, no, we can't, of course. We're in need of boluses, friends. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Oh. I guess we didn't turn in those bell bearings, but I don't think we really need to. So we're going to be making a lot of trips back to the site of grace, I suppose. This drains your HP really fast. Something that uh, in an earlier episode, of course, I... Um, well, I think we were in the swamp of Ionia when I got inflicted with Scarlet Rot, and I was just so like, what happened? I don't know what's going on. Why did <laughs> why did the, I die? Was it the Scarlet Rot? Yeah, of course it was, because it was draining so quickly. I just was not fully comprehending how quickly it drains your HP when you're afflicted with it.
Okay, so it looks like we have to light flames. Or these are just pillars, okay. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Rot grease. I guess one way or another, you're drawn to the... Oh, gosh darn you, basilisks. I hate you. Oh, no. Why can't you stay in your own game? Basilisks, basilisks, uh, that's one word I struggled to say. Basilisk souls. Oh, crud. Just drenched myself in scarlet rot. Um, the description for the area, I think it was from the map, talks about how This is standing water from the river. Um, or uh, it may have said stagnant water, something to that. Something in that vein. Um, which, yeah, is more or less what you might expect. Do we want to wait for the thing to... Gosh darn it. We're going to be here forever. That ticks down so slowly. That, uh, okay, well we might as well look for the item description that I'm... Fumbling to remember. Yeah, a great lake of standing water downstream of the Ainsel River. The, the divine essence of an outer god is sealed away in this land. So, in other words, yeah, it's the same theme of stagnation that we've seen time and again since Bloodborne. That you have this when you have water that does not <laughs> the message floating in the air there when you have water that does not flow that it's likely that at some point or possible at some point that you will rot city indeed that the water will sort of become a breeding ground for parasites and other sort of um, creatures that are problematic for humans. Oh, we were so close. Gosh darn it. Okay. So now, how are we going to handle this? I guess we're just going to leave me alone, friends. What a dreadful place. I'm just going to try and activate as many of these things as we can. Is that a boss? That's going to be a boss or something, isn't it? A giant basilisk or something. Are there pressure plates on the other ones? I just didn't notice. I feel like there must have been. There's a lot of things I don't notice. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna keep going. That pillar is floating in the air. <laughs> is that supposed to be a tree or something? Oh no, that's another one of those dragon friends. Don't mind me, friend. Oh, he minded me. Oh my goodness. I just need to activate this thing over here. I have no quarrel with you. I'm dead. Definitely dead. Oh, come on. 
No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <sighs> As it turns out, I popped way too many runes. Oh, there's an item right there. How did I miss that last time? Oh, unless... Oh no, it didn't pop up. Never mind. I was trying to think of an excuse. <laughs> Ionian butterfly. You know, one thing I will give them credit for, for not doing, <laughs> which is making the swamp slow you down. A la Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. I don't know if... Did that happen in Dark Souls 3 as well? I'm not sure. I can't remember. But... Yeah. When the swamp slows you down, it makes it that much worse. So at minimum... The fact that they made this swamp... That you can go through it without having it slow you down constantly. That's something. Get wrecked. Somebody, oh shoot. That's the thing, you take your eye off the HP bar for like 10 seconds and you're dead. You really have to be quite quick. There's an ancestral follower there. Sorry friend, this is not a nice place to be, I know. Hopefully get our runes. <laughs> Pick up a couple butterflies on the way. Why not? Oh no. Might have to warp back. To the site of grace. Oh no, I'm just hoping there was a site of grace in here or something. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna save quit. Screw it. Yeah, I don't feel bad. <laughs> cheese in the area in that way because this area is ungodly it should not exist <laughs> we may have to come back here when we're better equipped in terms of our boluses <laughs> Did, did we activate this one over here? I feel like we did. Yeah, I'm half tempted to just make a run for that place there. Gosh darn it. Okay, well, we did activate this one. There's obviously more stuff here that we'll have to return for. <laughs> this is uh, possibly my least favorite area. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Oh. Okay, that's not quite what I wanted. Oh, tch, Onyx Lord, friend. <laughs> lord, oh lord. 
Thankfully, they have basically no poise. I guess that's because they're essentially naked. Alabaster Lord's Sword. Okay, we're going to have to wait to read that. Because, of course, if we stop to read it, we're going to be dead. Somber Smithing Stone level 9. Oh, I guess you could. In theory. Gosh darn it. Equip some healing to try and counteract it. I feel like we're not going to survive this. No. We would need to equip those other... Ah, those other items. Gosh darn it. Okay. Those other talisman, I should say. Back to the side of grace. What if we equipped... There was that one that increases vitality. Or... Yeah, vitality has to be the one we're looking for. Oh, okay, it increases our resistance to curse, but that appears to be it. Immunity, okay. That's probably what we want. Oh yeah, okay, that's good. That'll at least keep us... from having that proc immediately. And I suppose we just have to be patient and wait for it to calm down in between intermediate steps. Leave me alone, basilisks. <laughs> I do like how they just sort of... <laughs> It's like, okay, he's gone. I guess we'll just relax here. <laughs> yeah, screw it. Uh, we'll start by getting these items here, and then we'll just warp back. We'll just keep doing that. This uh, segment is going to be a pain to edit, but that's fine. Black key bolt. Somber smithing stone. Just see if there's any other items. Doesn't look like there is. Or do we want to just make a run for the doorway? Because we are already here. something else over there. It's probably just going to be another room full of basilisks. Okay, we got five flasks left. Oh, preserving boluses. Very nice. Of course. Okay, we might as well use one of those. I guess to be fair, we do have eight of them. Oh, Sight of Grace, right, literally right there. Okay. I 
Yeah, it looks like there's more parts to this puzzle. Grand Cloister. Whoa, look at this. Fancy. Again, they've reshaped the waterscape. This like underground waterscape. It's fascinating. At least I find it fascinating. Gosh, basilisks everywhere. And they're just like, yeah, what sort of uh, creatures do you think we would find in a rotten underground lake? And I was like, oh yeah, remember in Dark Souls, the basilisk with the funny eyes? Yeah, that'd be great. Mizaki's the guy, love it, friends. Good job. Okay, these are the rot friends, which makes sense. What the heck are they called? Kindred of rot. Should we interrupt their prayer session? <laughs> Oops. So. It looks like we may need to complete the lake part after all. Because, yeah, everything appears to be connected in the sense that raising and lowering things all over the place. Unless I'm just not understanding what I'm supposed to be doing here. And that is a distinct possibility. But, yeah, I do think maybe we're supposed to complete the lake first. Unless we're just supposed to ride this waterfall down. That one message did say, think carefully. <laughs> so are we just supposed to ride the waterfall down? Let's see. Screw it. No, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, no. Of course, there's an ulcerated tree spirit down there. Because, yeah, why wouldn't there be? Like, okay, guys, you know. <laughs> what, yeah, we'll put a bunch of basilisks in the lake. That's great. Well, but I don't know if, I don't think that's sufficient. What else could we do? Oh, yeah, let's put one of those tree spirit friends down. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> Just the absolute worst collection of enemies. Okay, let's see what's going on on or in this building over here. If I had to put money on it, I would say <laughs> that it's most likely a bunch of basilisks. Although, looks like it could just be a chest. Oh, 
Nomadic Warrior Scope Book Level 22. Please tell me that that is what I think it is. Oh, gosh darn it. I don't care about Rot Pot or Rock Grease. Oh, what was I thinking? It is so easy to just completely forget how fast, it's crazy how fast it drains your HP, the rot. Gosh darn it. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab the runes and then warp back, I think. Or should we, let's warp back here actually. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna finish this in one episode. I was thinking we could. But, I don't think we are. So it may, in fact, be advantageous. Maybe advantageous isn't the right word. Eh, gosh darn it. I was thinking, okay, maybe we'll go to the Grand Lift of Dectus and ride that up to the Altus Plateau, but now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I think I would rather do that once we're ready to move on. To the next to the plateau so yeah maybe we'll just keep going for now oh gosh darn it Horn charm plus one. So is that going to allow us to walk around like he was? Just sort of walking around in the swamp with no issue? Okay, screw it. Let's use one of these. Greatly raises immunity. Okay, it still builds up, but like, that does appear to be... Okay, let's see. Um, I'll put that on, and then also put this one on. But now we're heavy rolling, so we'll have to take something off. Well, not a single one of those we can wear. Okay, that's fine. Or should we just take off the headpiece? <laughs> he looks basically naked. Oh, can't even wear the lightest one. <laughs> oh man, it's amazing. Hmm. Maybe... Yeah, let's go back to the beginning. We'll try this again. Not there, here. Okay, let's see how this works. Oh my gosh. 
Now we just have to wait for this to cool down. <laughs> okay, we've now stacked as much immunity as we can possibly get without obscuring our face, that is. Because, of course, why would you ever obscure Regret's face? Okay, then. Um, how do we want to handle this? Sorry, friend. Okay, here we go. Dwelling arrow. Oh, gosh darn it. If it's even worth it stacking the immunity because I feel like you just lose it. So you kind of have to treat this boss fight as though, and by you lose it, I mean you just get inflicted with, or inflicted, afflicted with Scarlet Rot regardless. Ah, so, hmm. use the clean rot armor for now because at least it has a little bit better defense yeah the clean rot armor it really uh <laughs> has a thinning effect makes you look so thin okay we might as well just give this a shot summon latena Darn it. Oh no. Wow, Lieutenant really is doing some amazing damage. Uh oh. This is bad for her though. Oh no. She's not gonna last very long now. We gotta be quick. Oh, we're dead. Oh. Ouch. Wow, the Tenna is just obliterating him. <laughs> GG, Lieutenant. Well done, friend. Dragon Scale Blade. Oh. Oh, wait. For a second, I thought that opened up an additional thing. Ah, uh, maybe we should just warp. Yeah, let's just warp back to the Sight of Grace. So there were two items we picked. Yeah, we still have not read the Alabaster Lord's Sword item description. Great sword forged from a blue-white meteoric ore. The blade conceals gravity-manipulating magic. 
a weapon unique to the Alabaster Lords, a race of ancients with skin of stone, who were said to have risen to life when a meteor struck long ago. Unique skill, Alabaster Lords Pole. Thrust the armament into the ground to create a gravity well. In addition to dealing damage, this attack pulls enemies in. Has a greater area of effect than Gravitas. Dragon Scale Blade, a weapon made by sharpening a gravel stone scale, thought to be the source of ancient dragon immortality, into an unclouded blade. Alas, the Dragonkin soldiers never attained immortality and perished as decrepit, pale imitations of their sky born kin. Unique Skill, Ice Lightning Sword. Call down a bolt of ice lightning into the blade and bring it down upon a foe. The ice lightning effect will persist for a while. Alrighty then. Don't really have much time left. Those things actually bleed. So, I'm not sure whether to continue, and if so, in which direction. Uh, I guess we still have to go to that, yeah. We still have to go to that house. Or building where we found all of those. All those basilisks. But again, I don't have the patience to wait. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I think we're going to call it there. <laughs> so thank you all very, very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.